Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got a traditional unboxing episode tonight. Four instruments, one small package. Let's go ahead and crack into the first one. So I believe this was a guitar I found on Reverb one day. The price was, you know, okay. I was kind of thinking I do want a complete collection of these, you know, all the colors and whatnot. So I thought I would go ahead and give this one a chance to see if it's in the condition that I was looking for, because it was advertised as like new old stock. So we'll, we'll have to see how it actually is. Not everybody describes the guitars the same. But fun story, I've already reviewed this model, so the next time I revamp my review is probably when I have the complete set. But this is one of the few reviews and demos that got copyright claimed because I used to do these nice little intros like where I kind of like cover a song and that was when I was using the Two Notes Torpedo. It's a direct signal and I swear that makes it easier for music label companies to find out that you're covering their song so they'll steal all your revenue for the entire thing. Like I get it, it's their song, they should probably get some sort of a royalty for your cover but the entire 25 minute video i don't know how to feel about that that's conversation for another day but let's go ahead and get inside this gibson usa case uh oh that didn't sound too good but thankfully everything's looking okay at first glance here anyways so this is a gibson les paul vixen the one I had reviewed was the pink version, but this is like that baby blue. So when these things first came out, it was like the budget level version of the Les Paul Goddess. It was the two series of guitars aimed more so towards women because they were just a little bit shrunken down from a regular Les Paul. Now scale length wise, it's the same, but we're talking the bodies, just a little bit smaller. But these have a fairly cheap finish to them. I'm not going to say it's a satin like it is, but it still has a semi what glossiness to it. But they offered them in so many beautiful colors. The one I really want to find is the red because apparently that's supposed to have like a little bit of sparkle metallic nature to it. But this is essentially the unofficial Katy Perry signature Gibson Les Paul. So <laughs> that just always makes me smile. So that's why I kind of like these things. They were cheap to begin with, but they kind of have gained a little bit of popularity. Not saying these things are very expensive. Generally, I'll pick them up when they're about a thousand bucks because I think they have future collectible value. Or as a complete set, they could be cool because of all the exotic colors. So if you have another Vixen and you're interested in about a thousand bucks, depending on your condition, yeah, feel free to reach out to me. I'd like a complete set. But it's also got the simplified wrap tailpiece, so I mean, it's not going to be perfect intonation. The fretboard on this one's really dried out, looking not so nice in the color department. But as far as the condition on this, yeah, there's like a ding right here they didn't tell me about. And a small chip through the finish right there. And maybe some other things that might be able to be cleaned out. But as far as these things go, I, I guess I'm happy. I'll keep this one. It's nice that it has a case, because these did not originally come with cases, I don't believe. However, this really helps show you just how shrunken down these are, because a normal Les Paul would be like right there so they are a little bit smaller oh and just a fun fact apparently Katy perry's original pink one got stolen on a tour and somebody contacted me saying that they think they know the whereabouts of it and it's like whoa that's that's a whole can of worms right there but they didn't want me to say too much about that something tells me i doubt Katy perry's actually still looking for that guitar but honestly i was told about that like three or four years ago so i i don't know anything or somebody could have just been making stuff up. But our next one, let's take a break and uh, take a look at what is inside this little package. So a couple of months ago, I did a review on a guitar that I decided to keep because I thought it was really cool. It was a 1994 Les Paul Studio. And I contacted the shop that initially did this anniversary run, House of Guitars. And they ended up seeing this video and they reached out to me and said, hey, I've got something that I want to send you. So they sent me this little thing, some cardboard. Thanks guys, let's get on to some unboxing. Not just kidding. <laughs> Inside here, we have a very important missing part. So it's the original back plate that was supposed to be on my anniversary House of Guitars. You can check out this review and demo if you want to learn more, but I was really saddened to find out when I had imported something back from Japan that it ended up missing something. But this is an actual photo of Les Paul that he signed himself right there, and it's numbered out of what it is. So how did they just happen to have the exact number that I was missing? Well, apparently 
those did not ship with this. Some of the early ones that the shop got in, these were still like being made and like they shipped out the door before they got out there. So they still had a couple of these out there. So they just happened to have mine. And that is just awesome that we can actually reunite these things now. And it looks like our clear back plate here still has like all the protective foam and everything on it. Interesting. So that means I should be able to put this on my guitar and have it be complete again. So thanks House of Guitars for completing that one. Next up here, let's go ahead and go with the Gibson box. So I've been waiting because I've promised you guys something. I don't know, like two, three months back. It might've even been longer than that. It's just when you order brand new stuff, you gotta wait a long time for things to come in. But this is the first unboxing that's teasing you guys that yes, it is indeed coming. However, right before these things were delivered, I almost thought, uh-oh, I'm not going to be able to bring you guys the Slash Collection video. Because apparently, the limited edition colors have now officially been discontinued. So, what color sleeps inside here? We're just going to have to find out. We have Vermilion Burst. So it's Vermilion and Anaconda that are going out of production. So that means I think we'll see a new Slash Signature color come up soon. So if you're in the market for one of those two limited edition color finishes, I would suggest you get on it because I mean, there's enough on the used market to suffice most people and there's going to be some at dealers for a little bit. But if you have to have like 12 months, no interest financing like some places do, this is your fair warning that they're starting to go out, but you can also buy mine. Remember, I'm buying every single Slash guitar currently in production. Yes, that includes a number four. So I think this is what I'm going to do. I've got the Epiphone, so I'm going to unbox the Epiphones like on the show and just a big thing. And then I'm just going to have the Gibsons to side by side because I, I don't know. A 10 guitar unboxing when it's all the same model, I think it makes sense to at least have half of them already out. That way I can, you know, kind of side by side compare them. So if you're interested in new guitar daying, one of the Gibson versions or one of the Epiphones, you can contact me now. But you might have to wait a little bit until I will actually be able to ship it because I still need to make these videos, right? And nice, we're back to the TKL Canadian made cases. Fantastic, love it. Now this is like a, a really fluffy interior. It reminds me of like an older blanket. Much nicer than what we've been seeing on some of the other cases. Oh, this is a pretty sweet example for buying it sight unseen. It's got a pretty nice top and a very dark fretboard for not being conditioned yet. And I'm curious, now that this color is going out of production within the USA lineup, will we actually see the Bolivian Burst, which was what this was supposed to be at first. It just had a Bolivian Rosewood fretboard on it. That's where we first saw this color kind of get teased. I've always been curious if that was ever going to happen. What is next for us to unbox? Let's check this one out. So I was making a review and demo of a guitar that I was searching all over for. <laughs> I had to get one back from Japan with the help of my friend. And then lo and behold, ah, oh, great. There's just one sitting on eBay. And at that point in time, I was still a little bit bummed out about the condition of mine that I ended up deciding to keep. So I thought, let's go ahead and buy this one. That way I can compare it. So let's get this thing out. First off, we have a, a weird kind of rigid Fender gig bag. This is really heavy, jeez. This is the first time I've ran into one of these. It must be like a, a hybrid gig bag case. Honestly, it just feels kind of awkward. <laughs> but you know, it's better than a regular gig bag. But the fact that we have this, I'm actually very sad because that means I'm missing a critical component of this one. Inside here, <laughs> it's another Mickey Mouse Telecaster. So this one, I can already see that the headstock has aged more so than my other one. That's more of like a creamy off-white. And ooh, this one's got a chip right here. So I think I'm better off with my other one, if we're being honest here. I mean, these are pretty rare. I think we decided there was around 200 or so of each. Some sources say 100, others say 200. But it's pretty rare. I mean, you can touch up little things like that. But you never know until you buy it and try it. I will say this one feels significantly heavier than my other one. 
and it's got some more scratches back here. You can also see the seam lines within the body. But if you need to learn more about the Mickey Mouse Telecaster, you can check out this full review and demo. I'm still looking for a Minnie Mouse in excellent condition. Like, I don't want any chips, nicks, or dings on it. Like, at this point, I'm okay with something on the back. But if there's, like, a finish breaking ding on the top on one of the dots or something, I don't want it. Now, the Donald Duck Telly, I'm not going to be as picky on because those things are just hard to find. So if anybody has a lead on a Donald Duck, let me know. Oh, interestingly enough, I do have some of the case candy in here and the original Tremar, which seems strange if we lost the Mickey gig bag. Now we've got one last guitar to unbox today. You guys remember how I tell you, generally with the big major releases, I do two different pre-orders because I don't know which one's going to come in. This kind of shows you why I do that, because I like to get the reviews out as soon as possible if I'm going to review it. Otherwise, people just forget about it and move on to the next latest, greatest thing. So coming in here super late has to be probably my favorite Firebird model that's been released as far as playability, looks, tone, all that good stuff. This is the Johnny Winter Firebird which you can check out the review and demo of the one that I got before this. I just loved playing that thing. So I guess having two, I'm not that sad about it. But if you're interested in a killer deal on one of these, just message me. I can't offer great prices on Reaver because their fees just take so much out of these things. Same thing goes for PayPal fees. I mean, if you can bank wire or something like that, you can save yourself like 600 bucks on something like this. Reverb's max fee, at this point in time anyways, is $500, so definitely adds up. But here we go, a new Johnny Winter Firebird. So, these things did not sell too well at the dealers. There's still some brand new ones out there if you want to pay retail price. In fact, I still have my review piece because I just can't bring myself to sell it because I kind of bonded with that one, so if it doesn't sell for the price I need, I'd definitely be holding on to that one a little bit longer. However, I would say my initial one had a better aging job. Like this one is so significantly different. Like you can actually feel down to the bare mahogany right there. I don't remember that being on my other one. That's kind of the unique thing about these is every single one of them is going to be just a little bit different. So regardless of how you feel about the aging jobs, it really comes down to the tone of these Firebird pickups in here. And of course we get all the cool case candy in here. Like our photo of Johnny right there signed by the person who took the photo. Our slide, our COA making this one number 34. That's a pretty decent number. They made 125 of these. And then all our other case candy hang tag stuff. So all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these four guitars with me today. Which one is my favorite out of all of these? It's a tough decision. I mean, this is probably the most expensive, so it should technically be the coolest. I think the winner of this episode goes to the Vixen. That thing's just cool. <laughs> Which seems strange when you have a Johnny Winter and a Slash signature with you, and you choose the cheapest, girliest one of the entire <laughs> series. All right, Troglodytes, we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.